inside the house with her daughter. He said that um, she had a premonition that somebody was going to kill her. So she asked Aaron to go and spend the night in a hotel. Now, her husband, Aaron, said, let me go inside, take a shower, and I will take you wherever you want to go. Soon enough, while he was in the bathroom, he heard the truck, and she was gone. After telling Katie's uh, parents what happened, he started talking about some conspiracy theories, uh, the world coming to an end, the people in power blowing up the towers. I mean, he kind of snapped from being a concerned husband and father and became this conspiracy theorist all in the same sentence, I guess. He also mentioned that she was kind of having an episode that, of course, he wouldn't believe that somebody was going to kill her. But he did want to understand and comfort his wife. So that is why he said, to wait and he would take her. He almost made it seem like she was having some kind of a delusion, maybe some kind of uh, an attack, you know. She was kind of delirious, and which makes me think as a mom and as a person, if your wife is going through that that you're describing to me as maybe a psychotic episode, would you leave her sight? I mean, would you? I, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me from the strange. If my husband is having an episode like that out of nowhere because he was just fine, I would start thinking, you know, what did he drink or take or what is, you know, let's go to the doctor. I'll drive. I'll take you to the doctor or I'll say, I'll take you to the hotel. saying is that it sounds very suspicious that somebody who's truly concerned about their partner is going to leave them to go take a shower. I think a shower would be the last thing that would cross my mind, but that's just me. Maybe he didn't think it was a big deal. Remember that this guy started talking about September 2001 in the same conversation when he was telling his in-laws how their daughter and granddaughter vanished. So they went to check out motels, hotels, everywhere they could think of find the vehicle. Vicky, Katie's mom, who was with him in the car, started noticing that Aaron was not really looking. He was almost like trying to engage in a conversation. 
conversation, you know, kind of looking at her while she was, while he was telling her about conspiracy theories. But why? Uh, I mean, why now? I think it's a topic, but why would you talk about this? How can you even think about those things? Wow. Wife and baby are missing. Another red flag, but in the meantime, Katie's sister Sarah decided to stay at um, Katie's and Aaron's house. They were hoping that Katie would come back, but as she waited, Something like random notes, no, notes, but 
face. She was spying into spiritual conspiracy theories. But we also know that Aaron was the one kind of obsessing over while he was working.
else had ever cried. I mean, it was one bizarre behavior after the next one. And, to be honest, it could be the way that he was processing things. But it all sounded so, so wrong. Eight days after his wife and baby died under mysterious circumstances, he was taken in for some questioning. Sadly, at that time, the coroner had already issued a preliminary ruling of suicide that was made permanent later on. And that was their determination. So they didn't investigate more. Four years passed. And um, that was the ruling. I mean, Katie's mom couldn't accept it. The entire family couldn't accept it. They knew Katie. She was not the breast. She was not struggling. She was not psychotic. They talked to her every day. They visited almost every day. If she was going through something that serious, they would have known. So, the family hired Jessica Sanders, a private investigator, who started fighting against the they had their mind made up. They didn't pay much attention to their private investigation. But Jessica Sanders and Katie's mom became really good friends. In 2015, things changed. <sighs> Seven years passed and um, different shows that feature true crime cases, including 48 Hours. They learned about the case and the box that they compiled full of evidence. I mean, Vicky, just Katie's mom, she had a room with what it seemed. She had maps and um, different timelines sticking on the walls. She just wanted justice for her daughter. And don't get me wrong, the police suspected of Aaron, but they had no physical evidence at that point. And Aaron's theory of Katie going through postpartum psychosis. It kind of made sense to the police after reading her thoughts and conspiracy theories in that one note that they found in her pocket. But that was the one thing they found that made them believe she was spying nothing else. And according to Katie's mom, she believed that Katie was documenting her husband's internet searches on her computer. They had a home computer and maybe Katie was trying to see why her husband was into so many conspiracy theories, maybe odd behavior, and the little words and things that she mentioned on that paper, maybe it's not what she believed, but what her husband believed. Katie's mom even talked to Katie's doctor, Dr. Christy Case. an appointment with her doctor the day before she died. And she said that the doctor said that in her professional opinion Katie 
was not going through postpartum depression. But here's the kicker. The police never talked to her. Because they ruled it, they ruled it as suicide. Another contradiction was that Erin said that her behavior was obvious. She was shaking, trembling, scared of him, paranoid. But Katie talked to her during that period that he said that she was going through that. And her mom said that Katie was her normal self. Somebody's lying, right? Another thing is that the morning his wife and daughter went missing. He searched on his computer two dead in Berkeley County. He supposedly didn't know then about what happened to his wife and daughter. But then he called his mother-in-law and said he heard the news on the radio online search, then called the mother-in-law and said, I heard it on the radio. This was investigated, but, you know, Katie's mom found out that that, that the radio never reported on it, specifically at that time. So how did the press know before anybody did and how come he was the only one that heard it on the radio in the house remember that Sarah stayed at the house while Vicky and Aaron went to look for Katie and she described to her mom that didn't seem right. That stuff was knocked off Trevor's dresser, clothes on the floor, drawers open in the home bathroom. It seemed like a sign of struggle. Maybe even a fight. Maybe Katie was trying to leave and that started the fight. Katie's mom believes that there is enough evidence that suggests that Katie died in the house. But since this was classified as she did it to herself, there was never a crime scene. No pictures, no fingerprints, nothing. Another thing that Vicky noticed is that was a mess that night, but the next morning when they found the bodies, she went to the house and everything was in perfect order. Like he had the time and energy to put, to clean and put things away. That's pretty interesting for a grieving husband. was open to talk to Vicky's mom, oh, Katie's mom, Vicky. But you have to understand that according to Vicky, because she never believed that her daughter did that, she had a reputation of the crazy lady in town. I mean, she lost her daughter and is fighting for the truth so I don't know how crazy 
She could have been killed at the house and taken to the tracks to make it look like she did it to herself. River was found a hundred feet from her mom. She drowned. How did she get there? Just the fact that he stated that he heard on the radio 90 